What's going on, guys and gals? Bonafide Hustler here. Hopefully, you can hear me just fine. Anyways, I'm res I reside in Austin, Texas. My name is the Bonafide Hustler. I, my name is really Chris. I buy stuff I find from garage sales, estate sales, yard sales, flea markets, pawn shops, swap meets, big box stores. I put it on places like eBay, Amazon, Craigslist, my antique booth, consignment stores in town on a part-time basis. Um, and I'm one of the owners of The Green Room University. It's the second link down below. Today we're gonna be talking about a money-making opportunity that you might not know about. And the reason why I'm making this video today is because this money-making, this money, this potential money making opportunity is coming around this weekend. So um, I'm going to be talking today about the REI garage sale. All right. This money making opportunity I've been doing for at least 12 years, maybe more. Um, it has evolved. It has changed. But in this video today, I'm going to give you kind of some insight on what it is, like what's the concept of the whole thing. Um, you know, do you want to go to it and check it out? I think it's going to, you know, be pretty good for you guys to at least know what this opportunity is all about. Now, I've been doing it for a while. Like I said, I consider myself definitely an expert at this thing. Um, and it's really interesting. It is, you know, when my YouTube channel started, what, five years ago, six years ago, it's something that I did not tell everybody about because it was really good. And I think it still can pay off to a lot of people, but you're going to have to pay attention. Now, that said, I will be doing a very, very detailed video about this opportunity in the green room tomorrow. It's going to be sometime probably before noon, but I'll be making that video in the green room. It's a private video, and I'll be going into high, high detail on how to ace the REI garage sale. All right. So that said, let's talk about, um, and hopefully you guys can hear me well. So I'm just counting on you guys to tell me if it sounds good, whatever. Um, yeah. So if you are into, you know, if you're looking for like bolos or uh, I want to know is thrift store finds or garage sale finds and all that kind of stuff, like that's not going to be this video. Okay. This video is going to be kind of like an overarching video about an opportunity where you can make money. Okay. Um, so if it's not the kind of video that you're looking for, you, you know, I'm just going to try to save your time. Right. I am going to talk for about 45 minutes or an hour about this one thing. So, okay. Um, I had to like write it all down because even with this not being a super high detailed video, like there's still a lot to cover. So I'm gonna go right down the list and kind of tell you uh, about this whole thing. Uh, number one, what is REI? Um, Recreational Equipment Incorporated, I think that's what it's called or something like that. Um, it's a company, I believe out of Seattle, if I'm not mistaken, outdoors company. So you can you know, say it's very closely related to like a whole earth provision company. Um, is, it any, is it something like a Gander Mountain or a Bass Pro Shops? No. Is it like an academy or an Oshman's or a sports town or Dick Sporting Goods? No, it's not. Uh, REI is a much more, uh, how do I say it, like niche oriented kind of store. They really focus on the outdoors and not team sports. Okay. That's very important to make that uh, distinction like team sports, football, baseball, you know, all that kind of stuff, lacrosse. Like, no, you're not going to find that stuff at REI, but you are going to find the kind of stuff that is more, you know, kayak related, bike related, hiking related, um, outdoor wear related, uh, you know, all the wind elements, all that stuff like, you know, that you have to find gear for, that'll be there. Camping, um, you know, just having tailgate parties and the right kind of coolers and all that kind of stuff, you'll find that there. Um, that's the kind of stuff you're going to be seeing at REI garage sales, that kind of equipment. So, Anyway, so that's what REI is. It's a store where you can, you know, buy this kind of stuff. They have a 365-day return policy, which is cool. So it's one year. Uh, it used to be on. It used to be indefinite, which is what made the garage show really, really good back in the day. But as of the past year, maybe the past two years, they've gone to a 365-day policy. So it's a little difficult. It's a little bit different and slightly more difficult now to make money at the REI garage show. But there's still an opportunity. So, anyways, um. Where are the REI stores? Well, that, you know, look it up on the map and see how close the closest one is to you here in Austin, Texas. We have two in the city and we have uh, one in Round Rock, which is a town that's like <clears throat> 15 minutes away. So, you know, there's stores around me. I know there's some in Dallas, there's some in Houston, there's some in Charlotte, North Carolina, there's one, there's one or two in San Diego. So it's not like, you know, no one has this opportunity, you know, it, it's around there. So, okay. So, um, the opportunity really is to, it's a garage, they call it the garage sale, right? It's a members only kind of thing. We'll talk about that here in a second, but, uh, it's a garage sale, meaning there are going to be goods that are going to be discounted. And a lot of times they could be discounted very heavily. Um, and that's important because that's the only reason why us hustlers or us resellers would really want to go to this thing. 
the other reason you would want to go to this thing is to buy stuff for yourself. Like if you're looking for outdoors gear, you can you if you if you know a little bit about outdoors wear gear, you know that it's not cheap. All right. So if you're trying to buy for yourself, like this is an absolute amazing opportunity to get you know, a decent amount of money off something that maybe you want to use for yourself. Maybe you're looking for a good pair of hiking shoes, trail riding shoes, maybe a bike, maybe a bike trailer, uh, you know, all the racks in the world, kayak racks, bike racks, that'll be there, tents, like sleeping bags. If you're into that kind of stuff, like, and you're going to buy that stuff, like I would say first stop and go visit this thing because it probably will be worth your time. Um, so yeah, that's what the opportunity is. It's a garage sale. Um, what is the garage sale? Essentially what it is, is returned items um, that have, I think if I'm not, I'm not mistaken, but they have a garage sale like every quarter. And these are returned outdoors items that could be very barely used. They could be mint. They could be like, it didn't fit my, sh my size. You know, like it's stuff that's just returned, not put back on the shelf. Um, and they make a distinction with the product, and I'll talk to you talk to you about that in a second. They like do a certain thing to the product, and they put it into a bin, and the bins become Gaylords. And then at these garage sales, they just release the Gaylords. Like they're just freaking stuff everywhere. Um, lots of people waiting outside. Like it's a real event. Like it's not some BS thing where you get to drive through and like, uh, you know, I see some things. This is like a lot of people waiting for this stuff. Like if you go to any REI garage show or if you've ever been to one, it's an event, like it's big, it's a big deal. Um, so, the opportunity, so the opportunity, we've discussed that, the return policy is 365 day return policy now, meaning this is not like, these garage sale items when you buy them are final sale only, okay? But as a customer like buying from REI you, and you buy new, it's 365 day return policy. So that's pretty good. Um, before I go more into this video, I do wanna say that I am not affiliated with REI. I've never worked for REI. I've only you know shopped there and I've done this garage sale thing for at least 12 to 14 years. So like it's a good opportunity, but I am not affiliated with them. So uh, my, my information is based upon experience and what I've observed throughout the years. Um, number five, is it a viable way to make money? I think it's a really good way to make money. I know back in the day, it was an incredible way to make money, like incredible. And I'm about to show you some of the proof of some of the stuff that I've done back in the day. But is it a viable way to make money now? That's different. That's, that depends on how you kind of look at it because things have changed a little bit. We'll talk about that. Um, if you're buying for yourself, it's absolutely a good way to check out really awesome goods. And I'm gonna, I have real examples of the goods that I've kept that I think are just completely worth my time. Like, remember, the way you make money in this world are two, twofold, it's twofold. One is you make more money. Like you flip something, you make more money, you start a business, something like that. The other way you make money is by not spending money, okay? So if you're gonna, you know, if you're like, oh my God, like I have a camping trip in two months and I gotta find this boot, you know, and it's 169 online, um, you know, if you know how to save money, you can maybe get that boot for like 20 to maybe 40 bucks at the REI garage sale or somewhere else. But that's another way to make money. You don't spend money, right? So think about it like that, twofold. Um, so is it viable? I think it absolutely is. And I, I, anytime there's an REI garage sale, like I always, always, always go to it. I always do. Um, now, will I be first in line or anything like that? That's a different story. But like I said, a more detailed video in the green room tomorrow before noon. I'm definitely going to be filming it for them. Um, REI in the past, uh, yeah, it's been a, it, it was super amazing in the past. I'm going to show you some of these past receipts and everything. Not receipts, but like you'll see in a second. They're called tags. Um, they're, it, it's good. It, it was really fun, worth waiting in line for. Um, fill up the entire spaceship kind of deal. Like I'm talking real deal money fast flip kind of stuff. So um, let me go into the comments for one second, just see that everything is going well. Adrian Molina says, I'm looking forward to this knowledge. Uh, awesome. Um, Deborah Pope says, it's a very high end store. Yes, you're not gonna find any crappy products there. I'm not gonna say this is a crappy product, but like you're not gonna find things like Ozark Trail or Great Land or um, things like that. You're gonna find high end things. Yeti coolers, you know, like freaking mountain hardware tents, and you're gonna find Big Agnes tents and sleeping pads and Cannondale or REI co-op bikes or Electra bikes or ghost bikes. Um, you're gonna find all kinds of stuff, GoPros, um, you know, Azolo shoes, Solomon shoes, like Olu Kai's, like all the high-end stuff is gonna be there. Like this is really quality stuff. Like they don't mess with junk, like just don't. So um, it's all good stuff. 
um, one of the questions might be like, can I get in for like garage sale prices like $2, $1? No. These are going to be items that are going to probably cost somewhere between, uh, you know, 20 to $200 to, you know, get in your possession. The $200 thing, maybe it being a bike, a bike rack, a kayak, whatever you really want, but like it's a hard good that's kind of big. It's probably going to be a fast flip, but those are kind of the ones that are north of, you know, they could be 200 or sometimes more. Um, so anyways, um, yeah, it, I think it's a great opportunity. I, th I definitely think it's worth checking out. It happens this weekend. Okay, so this weekend is one of the weekends. That's important. Um, any more uh, questions? Are REI clothes good to resell? Yeah, uh, it just depends on seasonality. So like, you can find cool jeans there, which is pretty cool. But like, for the most part, you know, we're going into a winter period and you're likely to find really awesome like rain jackets and windbreakers and snowboard jackets and things like that. So definitely, definitely cool uh, for resale, reselling clothes. But there's a lot other opportunities. Like the shoe opportunity is really good in REI. The bike opportunity is like incredible. Sometimes the bike rack opportunity is incredible too. Uh, bike trainer opportunity. There's just so many things to flip from that store. There really are. So, um, but that said, um, you know, I think, uh, I think it's good for personal use too. And I'll show you some of the personal stuff I picked up. Mally Jimmy says, there's no such REI sale in Houston area this weekend. You might, you might want to call that up because I know that all of Austin is doing it. And I know like, I think California is doing it as well. Um, so just check it out. Like uh, definitely call them up. Like don't just like look online or anything. Call them up. Be like, hey, when's your next garage sale? So even if it's not this weekend, like at least mark it in your calendars when the next one is. Typically it's on a Saturday. Sometimes it's a two day event to Sunday. I've, I've been a couple of those. Um, Every now and then they'll open one hour earlier, so all the members that are in line like get to go in and check out all the finds before the general public gets there. But you still can't purchase anything from the REI garage sale unless you are an REI member. I believe that costs like 15 bucks. It might be 25 by now, I don't know. It's a lifetime membership, so you pay it once, boom, you're in for life. Um, and then if I'm not mistaken, if you're an REI co-op member, you get 15% back on any purchase that you make or something like that. So you get a dividend at the end of the year, which is really cool too. So in, in the event that you have to go buy something new and you couldn't find it used anywhere or whatever, so you can buy it there and you get 15% back at the end of the year. It's called a dividend. They just, once a year, right around like January or February, they issue it out. It's like a little card and uh, it's in the computer too. So like if you lose the card, like they have it. Um, you need to be 20 bucks for the co-op. Okay, so it's 20 bucks. It's a great deal is what Malu Jimmy is saying. Um, Swamp Picker says, I've never heard of REI. You know, go check it out. Maybe Baton Rouge has one. Maybe, uh, I know he's in Louisiana. So just check it out. Look at your towns, call them up, and just be like, hey, when's your next garage sale? That's all you gotta ask, and they'll know exactly what you're talking about. Um, so <clears throat> how crazy, uh, is there a line? Yeah, there is a line, typically. And it forms, I would say, relatively early. I've been to some that, the line forms, you know, if it opens at nine or 10, like the line will start forming around six in the morning or sometimes earlier. So there will be a line, 100%. Like there's no way that you will go to an REI garage sale event and there not be a line. There's going to be a line, 100%. And it's going to be long. Like I've been to some where the line's like 400 or 500 people long. Like it's insane. And like snakes through a parking lot. Like it, yeah, it gets very congested. Like, it's really, really, really crazy. Um, how So number eight on my outline, how crazy is it when it opens? Um, they open it in an orderly fashion. Like it's a line for a reason. Like they let a certain amount of people in and usually that first batch of people, which, you know, the stores, depending on how big they are, they have a certain fire marshal code. So like a certain amount of people can be in there. And also they limit the amount of people that can be there based upon the sales staff that's there to do checkouts, to help. Uh, because while you're in an REI garage sale, like you're walking around like with these sacks, sometimes carts, um, and you're just filling it up. Like it's like a shopping spree, right? Because the deals are just like left and right. Um, that said, uh, there's so many quadrants of the store where they put items. Like it's not like you just run around like getting stuff in the aisles or anything. They're like certain, like there'll be a camping batch. Like the, they erect these tables. Um, I've been to so many different garage sales, like sometimes I just put everything on the ground, like outside of REI, but in their loading dock section, which is really cool. Easy to go around that one. Sometimes they have these like suspended tables, not suspended, but they're like these raised tables that look like bins. And uh, they're in certain parts of the store. Like they might, there might be four tables in the camping section, five tables in the shoe section, um, you know, a couple in the bike section, a couple in the kayak section. Um, and then they have all these like clothes on clothing racks and stuff that are just like around the store. So usually every store has kind of has like a loop that you go through um, and you'll know where the bins are and stuff and where the hanging clothes are and stuff like that. Um, 
so yeah, it, it's fun. It's so much fun. I cannot explain how much fun it is. So much fun. Like, um, so yeah. Anyways, um, so that's what you expect when you're inside. Like, there's a lot of people. They won't let in the entire line because they don't have the capacity to control all those people while they're in a the source. So they might lock it down like at the first 80 people or 100. And it's kind of cool being in the first batch if you are because you're walking out with all this cool stuff and everyone else that's kind of held up in line like gets to see you walk out and they're always talking to you, like giving you cool comments and stuff like, wow, like I have walked out to our, on REI garage sales with like two bikes in my hand, like, and then I go back in and I'm bringing out two Bob strollers and I go back in, I bring another bike out. I mean, and the people in line are just like blown away. They're like, holy crap, like, how are you finding all this stuff? I'm like, dude, like I was early in line, you know? So that's happened many times for me. Uh, now, when you're in line with some of these people, it's kind of cool. If you just, if you decide if you want to be in line, you're in line with like, some really interesting people, people that are like very outdoor savvy, that like, love the outdoors. I think it's a really good crowd to be a part of. You're not going to hear people talking about NFL football or anything like that, like sports where they sit at home and watch TV. These aren't the kind of people. You're going to find people there that are sometimes rugged. Some people camp outside of it. Some people bring their sleeping bags. Um, and these are real like bushwhacker kind of people. Like they're really neat. And uh, you'll see kids, you know, females, males, whatever, um, you know, all different races, sexes, like they're just all there and it's a lot of fun. So you get in some interesting conversations, but a lot of the conversations you will find if you're in the line of REI garage sale, you'll overhear people talking about how great the REI garage sales are and what they have usually found in past and previous garage sales. So anyways, um, so that's what to expect inside. It's pretty much chaotic. Um, it does take sometimes a little bit long to check out. Um, number 10, is it fun? Yes, it's really, really fun. I've discussed that. Um, number 11, are the goods high quality? Yeah, they're very high quality goods. Um, at least the brands are. Um, when they had the unlimited time guarantee thing, there were some really weird goods that you would find. High quality goods, but used to like the last drop of the good, meaning there wasn't any resale opportunity. But they've since done away with that because I think a lot of people abuse the system a little bit. So now it's only 365 days. So, you know, you're, you're probably going to find some really good stuff with very limited use at these garage sales at this point. Uh, number two, number 12, um, what condition is all this stuff in? Um, it can be mint, like basically new. It could be new. It could be someone that would, there's so many things that I've picked up. I mean, they're all pretty much used, right? But there are a lot, a lot of mint things there. And every now and then you come across an online order that like, the person picked up didn't like it and it's just sitting there like you know and the things that come to mind are like ski boots uh, mountaineering boots and things like that where they ordered it online it's not primarily in the store at any given time but they've ordered it online at rei.com and then it gets shipped to that local location the person looks at it and they're like i don't really want this thing so they've returned it and now instead of rei sending it back to main warehouse they just keep it hold it put it in the gaylord and then that gets dished out at the rei garage sale so it's a lot of fun. There are a lot of shoes too. Like that's the one thing I like failed to disclose. Like there's so many shoes to, to, oh my God, to like go through bins and piles of shoes, all really good brands, all. Um, number 14. Oh, number 13. Do you have to be a membership a member to participate? Yes. Number 14. There's one this Saturday, at least here in Austin, Texas. And I know it's worth probably calling up your local RERs to go check it out. Number five, should you go early and wait in line? Figure it out. Um, I, if you got a really good garage sale opportunity, like outside, like, you know, like hustling garage sales and stuff like that, you have to outweigh that versus maybe waiting in line at REI garage sale because it does take time. Um, yeah. And once you leave line, nobody's going to save your spot. So, uh, number 16, buy for yourself as well. Okay. So that's the end of the outline. Right. And I'm going to show you some things that I have bought and I've just kept in my possession because they're just really good goods, good goods. Um, and uh, yeah, so this is the kind of caliber of things that you can find. Tomorrow on the video in the green room, the private video, I'm going to be going into major detail on how to, um, you know, how to assess clean, what, what places to go for first and all this kind of stuff and how to really make it worth your time. That's going to be in the green room tomorrow. So uh, here's uh, shoe number one. This is a Solomon uh, XA you know, 3D Pro low cut, right? You can see I've used it. I've brought it to many places, Colorado, you know, Arizona, everywhere, Utah. Um, this is the condition after going to two or three like extensive trips, 
you know, this is what the bottom looks like. And most people can argue that's pretty damn good. So when I found it at REI, like this thing was basically mint, nubs on nubs. And now I've used it. I haven't broken it yet. So it's awesome. These are the Gore-Tex, or they have climate shield. So the, yeah, these have the climate shield right here, right? It's not Gore-Tex, but it's uh, a thinner layer called climate shield. It's a waterproof layer. So you can put this into a creek. Really fun. Um, a shoe like this at the REI garage sale, I believe, ran me like 22 or 27 bucks right there. And if you look at the, you know, if you try to buy this thing new at REI, it's like a $100 shoe. So there's that right there. Um, here's another REI find that was pretty interesting. Uh, the reason I know it's an REI find, I mean, I just know that they are, but like they put X marks on everything. You can see the X right here. Okay. So we'll be discussing that in a, in a second here. Here is a Solomon XA 3D Ultra 2. You're like, that looks just like the same shoe that you had, Bonafide. Like, what the hell? Why would you have two? Well, because one is climate shield, waterproof, hotter, and the other one is not. This one is not. So if like, you know, if I want to go do some stuff and it's going to be kind of rocking, but there's not going to be much water involved or mud or any kind of creek crossings, like I would wear this shoe, much more breathable, no climate shield inside, and uh, really nice to just every day walking around, whatever. So if you're hiking around or maybe you're in, um, you know, is it Arizona or New Mexico? You go to Mesa Verde and you're walking around, but you want a really comfortable shoe that can handle rocks and like ledges and stuff like that and some light hiking, this would be a great shoe, right? If you know that the weather is not going to be humid or wet, this would be the one you would want to pull. This shoe at REI, like 20 bucks. So that was good. Mint condition too. Here's one that I believe I paid 27 for. These are Olukai's Camuelas, I want to say. These Camuelas, yeah, these are Camuelas. If you don't know about Olukai, um, it's a company that started out making sandals. They really honed in on the craft of studying how Aborigines would walk across vast swaths of land in their bare feet. And so they wanted to bring that kind of mentality to the sandal market. And from there, they expanded to other kinds of shoes and ankle boots and chukkas and all kinds of cool stuff. But here is a pair of Oluai Camuelas that I've worn like maybe once. And uh, this is the condition of them right there. I mean, we can all argue that this is in pretty damn good condition. In fact, these are almost nubs on nubs. Um, it's a solid leather shoe, even down to the you know, undersole. Like this is not something that you see very common as a, a leather on the undersole. Extremely comfortable. I wear this only like on yike. I've only worn it like twice. Like I probably should sell them, but I like them so much. They're just a, a really nice looking shoe. Very, um, how do I say it? Very humble, like kind of shoe. Like it's just not, you're not showing off every anything. Like it's just a cool shoe, you know, chill with some loose jeans and uh, you know, a fleece or something in the winter time. It's just a chill shoe. Um, wouldn't want to bring this on rocks or anything like that, but this is the caliber of something that you could find at the REI garage sale, 27 bucks. Um, resale of this thing, you know, if you find it in mint, mint condition, probably 70 bucks or above all day. Um, especially if you have a really good size, you might be a closer to 80 bucks. So there we get. But Jason Kreider says, hey, Bonafide, do you keep 80% of the stuff you buy? I don't. No, no, no. It's, in fact, it's the complete opposite. Um, it is a, I probably get rid of 95% of the stuff that I buy there, if not higher than that. So it's an opportunity. Like I said, I wouldn't make this video if it wasn't an opportunity. Um, here is one of the better ones, $50 fine at REI garage sale. Um, this is my personal boot right here, right? I've only used it on one hiking trip, but now I don't have to ever get a hiking boot for any other hiking trips. Like it's just my boot forever, you know? Uh, this is a Zamberlin Vios. And uh, if you know anything about Zamberlin, it's right up there with Zolo, if not better. Uh, it's a Gore-Tex boot made in Italy. You can see the thing right there. And uh, it's all leather, Vibram undersole, like traction pads and everything all over the place. This is the condition after me using it one time. This is REI garage sale, 50 bucks. And this is probably a $130 boot in the market right now. Like in the condition that I bought it in, it was a $130 boot all day. But when you buy it brand new, this boot is about $260 or $279, that right there. So that's a Zamberlin Vios. Um, yeah, so that's the kind of caliber you can find. I have a, uh, a bike in my garage that I popped on for 300. And uh, that bike right there, we have used it for three years now, maybe. I bought it at an REI garage sale about two and a half, three years ago, something like that. It's called an Electra Straight 8. Um, I bought it for 300. It could, it's considerably worth 500 in town all day. I sold a much, in a much worse condition model um, that I found off Craigslist. It was $125 fine. I sold that for like, what, 400 bucks or something like that. But it kind of just goes to show you that an Electra Straight 8 cruiser bike in a, uh, 
poor condition still fetches 400. So in mint condition, it's probably five, uh, 550. In fact, I did list my REI straight eight cruiser briefly for like one day on Craigslist for like 550. And someone was like, I'm going to take it. And I was like, uh, I don't think I want to sell this thing. So then I yanked it. But that just shows, goes to show you the caliber of what you can find there when it comes to bikes. I've flipped many bike racks from that place. Many I've flipped everything from REI garage sales, everything that's in that store down to broken GoPros. So anyways, let's talk about, uh, you know, when you get in, you know, what these condi the condi condition of these goods are going to be used, mint, new. And right here I have tags, all right? From one visit at an REI garage sale, I just picked one of the biggest folders I had in my, uh, uh, this is from, these are 2014 tags, right? I could find some 2015 or 2016 tags, but this one was just like right there, so I picked them up. This is one visit from the store, okay? This is how many items I've bought in one visit, all right? So we're going to take a look at these tags and like, what do they mean? And then after that, um, I think that's a good enough amount of information so you guys can start wondering, you know, maybe I should do this or not. So this is one visit, okay? Look at all these things I bought, right? I don't know how many it is, but it's probably close to 40 goods, maybe more. All right, so we have all these right here. Let's take a look at some of these tags, okay? I'm not gonna go through all of them, but, um, and the funny thing is, many of these tags are gonna be 50% off of the price that's marked on there right now. So let's take a look at the first one. This is an Anu Montar, uh, it's 100. So one of the, you know, the tags can vary. But let me show you something real quick. So the top of the tag right about here will show you what the item is. This is an Anu uh, hiking boot. It'll show you the price that was in the store, the last given price in the store, something like that, 160. I believe that's what it is, or it could be the retail price. But either way, that's a regular price. If you were to walk into REI and try to buy that boot at that time, that's basically what it would be. This one says 160, okay? Now, this one says reason why it was returned, damaged item has been worn. And they used all kinds of crazy terms like this because damage can just mean worn, you know, a little bit. And you flip the boot over and it, a lot of times, many times, it'll look like this, all right? And we can all agree that this is not damaged. Like, this is perfect for eBay. Um, and that's where all the majority of my shoes go to anyway. Um, so it says, da damaged item has been worn. So when you pick up these Anu whatever, you want to definitely look around, make sure there's no delamina del delamination um, or anything really messed up with it. But for the most part, the reason why I popped on this is it was probably half off of that price right there, 48.83, and I paid half of that because when I have a stack this big, typically it means it was a 50% off deal. Meaning that when REI garage sale opens up, they have these goods that are like this price, right? And then sometimes later in the day, you know, afternoon, sometimes, not all the time, but sometimes they'll reduce everything by 50%. So if there's a stack this big, more than likely I popped on it with 50%. But anyway, so 24 bucks right there. Thought it was pretty good. Let's take a look at the next one. There's some ASICS Gel Kayano 19s. Um, okay, so ASICS Gel Kayano 19, we can see that right there. It says price 94.83, right? It's a pretty expensive running shoe. This one, the reason it was returned is because it didn't have enough ankle support. It says it right there. I mean, look at it, right? It says not enough ankle support. 27.83. Okay, so I don't know how much I really, I could have been 50% off, but either way, you can tell it's even $27. That's a sweet, sweet, like, deal right there. All right. Um, the uh, the selling price is that. Kayano 19 at that time was probably, if it was one of the better colors, like $79 or so. You can kind of imagine what's going on through my head as I pull the trigger on these things. Um, okay, so this one says Elkridge 2. Um, okay, an Elkridge 2 Low WP. I don't know what the hell this thing is. $145 new. Uh, reason for um, reason for return was caused knee pain within a week. It was gently used. So that's the reason why I probably picked it up. $42.83, whatever this thing is, with a price of, selling price of $145. Here we go. I know what this is. This is a Solomon XT Wings 3, a very, very good shoe. In fact, right under their S-Lab model which is like the top of the top of the top of the line like s lab solomon shoes are like you probably will never find them at a thrift store but xt wings 3 you'll probably find every now and then if you're lucky 140 dollars all right for a pair of trail running shoes right there xt wings 3 let's see what the uh here we go here's the damage right they're damaged why uh because they didn't like the way it fit you see what i'm kind of getting at here people return crazy things to rei for the dumbest reasons but anyways damaged worn didn't like fit 4283 um, yeah, so that's an interesting one. Right? I'm pretty sure these are 50% off ones because 
I don't know if I'd spend 42 on that shoe right, right there, but anyway. Um, so yeah, there's just a bunch of them. Here's another one, Solomon XA Pro, $130 shoe, damaged, worn, and not to be liking of the customer. 39.83, so I probably walked out playing 20 on that one. Here we go, a La Sportiva climbing shoe. Uh, last reported thing in the uh, store was 49.83, the last price. The damage is they're worn out, which I guarantee you they weren't because I wouldn't have picked them up. 18.83, so I probably paid nine for that. Um, Cascadia nine, Brooks Cascadia nine, regular price 120 in the store. Description of problem, worn for half a block. It was just a little too big. I'm not even kidding. I'm not making this crap up. Like, this is on the actual tag right there. All right? You see it? All right. So if you didn't see it, it says, worn for half a block. It just was a little too big. 36.83. Solomon Speed Cross 3. There's a lot of shoes in here, but I'll come across something really awesome, I'm pretty sure. Um, 84.93, last reported price in the store. Damaged. They've been worn. They're too small. Right? There's the, the tag right there. All right, 2483. All right, so let me find something else that's a little different than a shoe here. Lots of shoes because shoes do make money. Olukai Hayapo. What's a Hayapo? I think that's a boot or a shoe. $110 in the store. Damaged. I don't have been used. Uncomfortable. 3383. Um, all right. So I, I do pop on a lot of shoes. It's pretty clear at this point. Some Tiva sandals. Regular price, 80 bucks. Too small. Feet hurt after wearing for a while. $30.83. Very interesting. Um, ah, I know this one very well. Okay. So um, this one right here was a bike, a Novara Ponderosa 29er. All right. You can see it right there. It says Novara, no, Novara Ponderosa 29. Right. You can see that. Um, this one says the suspension fork has a manufacturer's defect. The customer was not satisfied with the bicycle. Now, when you do lockouts on front forks and bicycles, basically when you have a suspension fork in the front, there are many companies that will put a lockout function. It's a little blue tab that if you rotate typically to the right, it will lock out the fork, thus making the fork very rigid. Now, why would you want that? Because let's say that you are you know, just gonna take your mountain bike out for a nice cruise and there's no trails ahead of you and no obstacles and you wanna be efficient when it comes to pedaling, not the thing bobbing up and down. So you would lock the fork out. Let's say you're just going to a farmer's market down the road or something like that. Yeah, you wouldn't want suspension travel for that reason. So you lock it out. Now, when I locked this thing out at the REI and it was sitting there and I had a decision to buy it or not, I locked it out, I pressed down on it and it did not fully lock out, meaning the second I pressed down, it was like rigid. It was like two millimeters of play. Like I felt it for a split second and I was like, all right, that right there is just a bogus way to return a bike from, in my opinion. So suspension fork has manufacturer's defect. Customer was not satisfied with bicycle. The original price of this bicycle, the last reported price was $849.00 and nine cents. I rode this bike for two years of my life, okay? I just wanna tell you, I bought this bike. I got a 10% off discount too, you can see it right here. I was talking to the people, I was like, hey man, can you help me out a little bit? You know, this is bona fide hustler stuff. Like you talk to people that work there and is there any way that you can move this bike to me? I actually know, <laughs> the funny way, the way I got this one right here is I know the manager of the store and he's really cool with me and everything like that. But back then, you know, like, 10% off discount. I was like, come on, I really like this bike. Like I want to use it. And I did, right? But I wanted to use it with the intentions of flipping the hell out of it later. So I got a 10% off discount. Uh, so for $439.83, they knocked off 10%. I used it for two years and then I sold it for 500 something dollars, something like that. So yeah, I used the hell out of this bike. That was an okay bike. It wasn't that great, but it just goes to show you like, right? I might not, I made money on this bike and I used this bike. So very interesting stuff right there. Um, let me take a look at some other things here. Omega GTX. Uh, here's a good one. Okay, so here, uh, hopefully I have enough people watching. Um, I think this is a really good one. So this is uh, for a solo, all right? So remember this boot that I showed you right here? The Zamberlin TP, uh, the Zamberlin's BIOS GT. Okay, so like this one, directly rivals a company called Azolo. It's a TPS 520 GV, right? In fact, I actually found a TPS 520 GV yesterday at Savers, um, sitting on the ground over there. If you guys, here, I'll show it to you. One second, give me one second. Okay, so I found this at Savers the other day, right? You can kind of see like there's just, they're so similar. Look at this, right? 
two different companies, all right? Two different companies, very similar. Zamberlin, Azolo. Found this at Savers yesterday for $8, all right? Underside, pretty good. It's gonna find its way on eBay very soon. And in fact, today. Now, the interesting thing, when I hustled it, I was like, oh my God, no way, right? See the X mark? That's an REI garage sale item right there. I found it at Savers, but still, that's an REI garage sale item. Um, so the resale of this boot is gonna be somewhere between 80 and 100 bucks, right? Maybe more. Um, but this one right here, uh, this was, so yeah, sorry, let me talk about this one. This is an Azolo TPS 520 GV, which is essentially this one. Um, and if you didn't know where to find the models on the Azolo boots, they're typically on the tongue. There's a little tag right here, and this one says TPS 520 GV. So just if you wanted to know in context what this thing looks like right here, it's this boot right here, all right? So this one right here, oh man, this is a good one too. So Azolo TPS 520 GV, great, great size uh, 12, size 12. Um, Last reported price in the store, $295, all right? It's sitting right there, all right? $295 boot. And the reason for uh, the problem, why it was returned, look at that. Did not like fit, all right? Now I know I definitely, this is definitely a 50% off pile because I would have never spent that much on one boot. But I did pick these up for 70 bucks and I probably resold them for like 150. Um, but that's what's going on right there, right? There's that one. Um, oh, sweet. I just realized, all right, cool. Check this out. Yeah, holy crap. All right, so remember how I said I paid like 50 for those boots? I actually didn't, I paid 42 for them. And the reason why I know this is I just happened to find the tag of this black boot right here. All right, this is my boot, right? I own it, it's mine. Um, Zamberlin, Zamberlin Vios, day gray, code one. It says it right there, Zamberlin V, you can see it right there. Last reported price of this boot, $260. Did I say 265? I was damn close. To 280, actually, 280. Okay, so I'm really close. Anyways, 280, it says it right there. Damaged, worn about four times, just a bit too small, right? Size 12, this is definitely mine. 84, 83, I paid half of that, 42 bucks, and that's how I ended up with a $280 boot for 42 bucks for myself. So you can kind of see what's going on. Let me see if a couple more. I think we get the idea of what is going on here. Um, God, there's so many weird. Okay, I'm just. I'll just read you some of the. Uh, the uh, damage concerns, like how people are returning this kind of stuff. Customer found shoes too hot for comfort. Uh, boots are under are cutting the customer's appendages. That was one of them. Right boot has uncomfortable crease underfoot. Doesn't matter. Um, owned for a few months. Side of right shoe cut on other shoe and ripped. Barely used, which that was not even present when I bought it. I was like, okay, I don't see what the hell they're talking about. Here are all the receipts from that day of REI. Let's see how much I spent on some of these things. Yep, they definitely are 50%. And you can see these receipts right here. It says imperfect item, 50%, 50%, 50%, 50% off, 50% off, 50% off, right? So on that one store, I went. To, I spent 160 on that one. On this one, all 50% off deals right there. You can see it on the receipt, all 50% off. Um, this store, I spent $665.35. And in this store right here, all 50% off, blah, 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 blah. Now we know why there's so many receipts, so many little tags here. This store, I spent $794.89. So, and that one had the bike on it too. So, you know, I definitely say that I know what I'm talking about when I go to this place. But yeah, you can just see, wanted to try a different brand. The bottom is dirty. Right foot is excruciating painful. Customer did not like the shoes. Damage, too small, worn once. I ran into them twice, they gave me shin pains. Um, this, this shoe is missing insoles, which is not a buzzkill. Go to eBay, just disclose that. Look at that, I paid half of that price, whatever that is. So there's, I paid five bucks for this thing. These were some Shimano R107s, these are basically road riding shoes. I paid five bucks for them, probably sold them for 50 on eBay. Um, some Vasque boots that were $75, I paid 16. Um, yeah, so anyways, here, here's some good. here's a good one. A Z2 Uniweek, which is a, uh, this is a sandal made by Chacos. And um, this one, the last reported price in the REI was $49.83. The funny thing is when I sell these, they're like way above that. Came back with some road dust on them. That's the, that's the reason they were returned. They came back with some road dust. I paid f less than five bucks for these things, right? So anyways, um, you kind of get the point. 
it's just so much fun looking at these like things. So use the yeah. lacing caused issue for my foot. Did not fit my arch well. Wore for a week. Feels like something is funny sticking up under the tongue. Used. Left toe is starting to delaminate. Yeah, right. Um, needed waterproof shoes. These are not waterproof shoes. These are damaged now. Damaged. It was worn. Not enough ankle support. Didn't like the way it fit. Caused knee pain. Um, and damaged. They were not to the liking of the customer. Worn out. Worn for half a block. Just a little too big. They've been worn. They're too small. Um, so you kind of get shoes smell. That was a good one right there. Damaged. Shoe smells. So, anyways, that's the REI, um, you know, receipts, the tags that you can expect to find on every single item that's at the, at the REI garage sale. Um, and that pretty much concludes the show. I wanted to just make sure I highlight this opportunity for you guys. Like I said, tomorrow in the green room before noon, I should be doing an REI super in detail garage sale video, like how really to crush it, where you want to focus on, like how's the tactics going to, how are the tactics all going to come together? Um, all that kind of stuff. But I think I gave you guys enough proof that like, you know what, this stuff really does work. And um, just pulled out some random folder right here from 2014. Those are some receipts and I got way more receipts than that. Um, my brother and I, we make it a point to go see um, the two that are in Austin on garage sale day. So like if it's REI garage sale day, we're gonna visit both. We typically don't get done and coming home till about 1230 or one. Um, Cause we go to one, we go to another and sometimes we go back and forth to them. But it's a great way to make money. The most I've ever spent on one store at the REI garage sale, the most, I do remember this distinctly, was $3,300. Um, and I remember this because I had a Honda Element that day that was like, I mean, to the ceiling packed up with amazing stuff. And uh, I started freaking out on the way home. I was like, holy crap, I just threw down $3,300. Like I just threw it down. Like I'm, I was panicking, right? So, and I'm not, I can't make this up, but what I, what I did, it was like, oh my God, I gotta start selling something today in order to get this money back, right? So I pulled off the highway, I went to a field, and then I pulled out one of the Bob strollers in the back that was like mint. And I think I bought it for like a hundred bucks. I pulled it out, I listed it for 350 on Craigslist. And then on the way back up home, I was like, oh, I feel better now. Like at least there's something on the, you know, up there on Craigslist. So anyways, I, I thought it was really kind of funny. I mean, I freaked out. I really was like, holy crap, I've never thrown down that much money in a two hour period, you know, like sourcing things. So anyways, I uh, thought it was really good, you know, time i've learned a lot doing this it could not be an opportunity this weekend who knows like they might start off their prices like really high and then progressively lower them through the day don't know um when i go to them recently like i go after my garage sale run like i go to garage sales in austin texas then i go to the rei garage sale but it's after it's opened and uh it's you know it can be hit or miss right so you just gotta <laughs> you gotta check it out and uh i think it's kind of funny um some of these response some of these uh ex excuses but uh reasons why these things were returned a lot of fun okay if i leave you guys with one thing on this video is that the rei garage sale is a ton a ton a ton of fun and uh you'll definitely learn some things you're probably going to end up buying something it's just the way it is um but yeah there's some great things i mean like sunglasses with like one tiny micro scratch on them. Uh, there's so many things like lanterns and stoves and like all this really, really cool stuff. So if you enjoy the outdoors and all this other stuff and which I think most people should really gravitate more towards that stuff in life anyway, then this would be a really good opportunity for you to go check it out, learn it, see if you can make some money. And if not, buy yourself something cool on a discount, you know? But that's pretty much it, um, yeah. That is, uh, if you guys want to learn more about it, you'll see me in the room tomorrow in the green room. I'll talk about it more, super high detail, and it uh, should be like a 45-minute video. And that's pretty much it. I hope to see you guys out there on one of these REI garage sales. If you have any more questions, um, you know, you can hit me up on Facebook. Maybe I'll try to answer a couple. But um, actually, you know what? I'll, I'll stick around right now for five minutes. If you have any questions, I will stick around and try to answer them for you. Um, Chris Uret says, I got a great... $80 pair new of native sunglasses there for $12.99. It's great. Joy Crane says, I've been a member of REI since the late 70s. Awesome. Um, Swamp Picker says, bye, thanks. Uh, Malu Jimmy says, damn, I can't believe REI did not block those buyers and refuse the return. Their policy, when I when I did all this, and as of, well, a year or two ago, was 
you know, like if you're not happy with the product at any time during its lifetime, like you can return it. So that was one of the biggest loopholes with REI. I don't think it's there anymore. I think it's 365 policy now. So, um, but yeah, Melissa Francis says, these excuses are really hilarious. Yep, telling you. Um, Thriller Gorilla Picker says, wow, you're throwing cheddar right out there, Chris. I paid for the milk now. It's time to make cheddar out of it. That's what I'm saying. Like, you know, I, I make my, my videos are there to entertain you guys, to show you what I'm finding, to spread goodness out there, to really show you guys that, you know, sharing is caring, good mentality. You know, by doing this, am I creating competition in my town? Yeah, sure, I probably am. But, like, there's enough to go around. There's always enough to go around. Um, but no one's ever going to beat you at being you. Like, there's only so much, you know, if you, pre if you, if you prep well, you know, at garage sales and all that kind of stuff, and no one can beat you. Like, that's just the way it is. Like, you are your own thing, the way you've prepared and everything. Um, if you've really done a good job of preparing at normal stuff in life and you've given it all you got, it's really tough for someone to mimic that or beat you. Like, it really is. So usually when you invest a lot of time in something, it means you care, you're passionate about it. Like, you really want a good outcome. And um, it's really hard for someone, even if you teach them, to mimic the exact same thing and to affect you in a competitive nature. Like, it's very, very difficult. So that's the reason why, you know, abundance mentality always wins out there is because the scarcity mentality is like, oh, my God, if I tell them about this bolo, like, that means no more bolos in the USA for me. You know, like, seriously, for someone to affect you, they would have to mimic everything that you did to the time, to so the time that they left the house and everything in your hometown to be there before you got there and to clear out a shelf. Like, you know, that's the kind of mentality that I'm thinking. And so that's the reason why I don't really worry about this, you know, disclosing all this information. I really want to help you guys out. And, um, you know, if you do beat me, congratulations, because I think that's really, really cool. <laughs> but I do prepare heavily for things like this. I prepare heavily for garage sale days, you know, and um, I'm pretty content with everything. I don't sit there and go, oh, my God, I should have done this, should have done that. Like, I take accountability for my actions and I prepare very well. And I'm very passionate about it. So, that's the reason why I always, you know, I usually always win. And at least in my head, I'm always winning. And that's a good thing. So let's talk about uh, some questions that are in here. Through the gorilla picker. So do you think that the market at REI is high? Yeah, you know, you can you can say that it's pretty high because you get the 365 guarantee. And if you're a member of the REI co-op, you get 15% back. So, you know, yeah, you can get it cheaper on Amazon. But six months down the road, you're not going to be able to return it to Amazon if something, you know, weird happens to your product with REI, at least you get to return it. And that's, you can look at that as like maybe buying an extra warranty on your product. I like having that warranty and I like REI a lot. And I think it's a great store and there's no other store really like it here except for a whole earth provision company, but it really doesn't contend with the caliber of goods that REI has. Um, I just like REI, like they have great stuff. Um, there's 30 or so, so stores in Cali, says Kurt Miller. Yep. Uh, Demi, Armiola says, did you schmooze the manager? Um, no, you know, like, you know, when you get to know who the managers are in the store, like I got to know a lot of people that worked in these REIs in different locations. And I got in front of the manager a couple times just talking to him. Like, you know, like he was standing at the front door, like watching all the chaos go down. And, and I was like, man, this is a great sale. You know, just like little conversation like that. Like, this is a great sale, man. You know, like, I love going to these things and then they just start talking to you, you know, and I uh, just got to like, know him. And over time he would see me at garage sales and then he would be like, Oh yeah, that's Chris. Like I know Chris. And that's the reason why I got 10% off a bike that he probably wasn't supposed to do 10% off on. But it's because I took a time out of my, my day, you know, to get to know someone. Right. And that's an important thing to learn out of all this. It, it, I'm not saying do this at your garage sales that you go out, you know, because that can take up a lot of time, but get to know important people that are in these places that you visit a lot, especially if you are going to be a repeat kind of customer. Debbie says, do you have to be in the co-op to go to the sale? Yeah. Um, Kurt Miller, does Chris have a green room or cheddar tattoo? No. <laughs> um, Aaron Kluge says, the lifetime membership if you get the tattoo. <laughs> yeah. Um, what else we got here? Any more questions? Um, are there any REI stores in Cali that I know of? Yeah, there are like two in San Diego. That, that's the as much as I know right now. If not, what other stores does it compare? It kind of does not compare to any other stores, honestly. Um, Darren Eckelman, yeah, if you watched the video earlier, did, do I keep any of these scores for myself? Yeah, about 5% of what I pick up, I keep for myself. Um, Swamp Picker says, Chris, the two bikes <coughs> would have been a good deal. I agree, Swamp, you didn't have room for them. It's something that he had messaged me on Facebook about. Um, Tom Sawyer says, yeah, dude, let's all be one big company. That's what I'm saying, man. 
like just share, you know, sharing is caring. Tino, the sole advisor. Hey, Chris, what's up, Tino? Good to see you. Um, any more questions? Are there garage sales the same date across the country, Terry Canyon? Um, I believe so. There's a lot of times where they have the same date for all the REIs. So someone just, you know, after this video is live, go call your REI, see if there's a garage sale and go check it out. I think it's really cool. Even if you don't resell anything from it, like it's really, really neat. And there are definitely other resellers in line too. Like I'm not going to say like they hound down on resellers or anything like that. They don't like, they don't care. Like they just want to get rid of this stuff. So um, plenty of resellers in line. Like I, I've met a lot of them and they're so cool. Like I've seen them, I've seen them mountain biking in trails before. Like they're just neat and we've gotten friendships out of it. So it's neat. Thriller Gorilla Pickup, do you ever pick up bike cracks uh, there? Something's itching my nose. Um, Thriller Gorilla Pickup says, do you ever pick up bike cracks there? Yeah. Uh, in fact, the one, not that I have now, but the one that I have as my secondary bike crack, I did pick up there. And I think I picked it up for, I don't even know. 75, maybe a hundred bucks, but you might like, a, you might be like, that's an expensive rack. And I'm like, well, I could have flipped it at that time for two fifty, three hundred dollars but I didn't, I really wanted a bike rack, a four bike rack for my SUV. So I have it. Um, but I since then have gone to another style of bike rack called a platform rack. Right. Um, and I like the platform rack a lot, except it only holds two bikes. So if I have four friends that want to go ride, I'd have to reinstall the other REI bike rack on anyway. Right now, if I wanted to sell the REI bike rack that I bought for 75 or 100 bucks, whatever, if I want to sell right now and get out of it, I could probably sell it for 120 bucks, like gone. So anyways, and that's just because there's been so much evolution in bike rack technology since then, but still, it's a good bike rack. Um, Chris Uret says, yeah, we also picked up a $500 Thule rack for 75 bucks on the last day of the clearance, the garage sale. Day. Yeah, awesome deal. See, I'm telling you, like, I know I'm not the only person that goes to these things, but I will... My, I might be the only person that's going to talk about it as an opportunity because there's been a long, there was a long amount of time where I kept it as my own secret. And I was like, oh my God, like, this is awesome. Uh, I think College Picker, the first time that he went to it, I told him to go to it. This is like three or four years ago. I was like, bro, there's an REI garage sale. You might want to call your stores in Florida, see if it's going down. And uh, this was right before he was going to come to Austin. And I told him about it and he did do the work and he called it up, everything. He took my advice and the strategy that I was going to, I'm going to talk about tomorrow in the green room, but he took all that strategy, did it exactly the way I told him to. And I think he walked out making like 800 or a thousand dollars in just spending like two hours in line. Or, I don't know, something like that. But I know he only shopped very, for like maybe 30 minutes or an hour and he spent maybe one or two hours in line. And I know after all that was done, it was like 800 or a thousand bucks. I'm pretty sure that was what it was. So, you know, you can make some good money. Um, Malu, Jimmy, Chris, is it worth going later in the day, like near noon, or is this good stuff gone by then? Depends on what you consider good stuff. I would definitely just say, just go and go check it out. There's a lot of stuff. But Malu, Jimmy, you're in the green room, so tune in tomorrow's video. I'm going to discuss a lot more than I did today here. Um, it's really like Gorilla Pica says, huge one here in Seattle. Yeah, the Seattle one's the biggest one. Um, we just live 75% of the, our lives outdoors. Yeah, the, the Seattle ones and the ones in the northwest are apparently amazing. Kurt Miller, is shipping bikes easy or not? I have never shipped a bike that I found from the REI garage sale. Every single bike that I flipped from there has been flipped on a local market. Craigslist. Um, Thriller Gorilla, Gorilla Picker says, hey, Chris, stay on your good luck for sales while you have been on. Oh, cool. <laughs> so it says, Chris, hey, stay on your really good luck. I've had four sales while you've been live. <laughs> That's pretty good. Um, Vintage Philly PA, hey, Bonafide Hustler, you are the man, you're always caring, always sharing. Yeah, I am, you know, I guess I don't know any different. Um, it, that was, you know, I, I said about in my some of my previous videos, I was like, there's a secret that I have and, you know, everyone's got their secrets. Like I was gonna, I said that a couple times, I don't know if you guys picked up on it, but way in the past, I was like, you know, everyone's got their secrets, but I try to share everything that I know. When I said everyone's got their secrets, like it's down to that one and there's probably a couple more that I have, but, I kept a couple for myself, right? It's not being like stingy or anything like that, but they were just really good at the time. And I don't know, like I, I tend to discuss most of my secrets now. Um, the REI is a good one. Uh, you know, if you can get to sample sales, that's another good one. Um, and then swap meets from like your local bike stores and stuff like that. That's really good too. Dealer demos, samples, all that. Oh man, you can get some crazy freaking deals at those places. But yeah, um, Aaron Kluge says, I have secrets, but you have to join the green room. <laughs> Melissa Francis says, Chris, I'll check your video out tomorrow in the green room. Thanks for your vids. You're welcome. Bargain Barons, is Craigslist the main platform I use for your local sales? Uh, for the big goods, yes, I do. 
Um, but for shoes and anything else that I pick up at REI or whatever, like that's all going to be the shoe box that's from USPS, 15 by 8 by 6. Really easy shoe box. I mean, come on. Thriller Gorilla Pika. Chris, your parents raised you and your brother, right? Thanks. Um, so yeah, Kurt Miller says, is shipping your bikes easier or whatever? Don't ever mess with eBay. For the most part, all the caliber of bikes that you'll pick up from REI are going to be a local sale. And I think that's pretty much it. Eve's test here. What shoe size sells the best? Man, I would say on all of them, 12 is really good. Um, I think I got all the questions answered. Okay, keep it on. I'm still looking at some questions. Lots of like cool comments in here. Uh, if you did enjoy the video, guys, like hit the like button. I didn't ask that yet, but please hit the like button. Flip the Thrift is saying, what time is the Thrift battle tonight? It is at 7 Central, and I will be battling Ryan and Allie Roots. I'm probably going to die. But anyway, um, yeah. And yeah, so hit the like button. Very, very important. Um, and I think that's pretty much it. Nice video, Chris. Thanks for covering the subject. I'm Am for Saturday. Chris, you're it. Yep. Um, Jen Texas, woohoo. Hey, maybe I'll see you in one of the lines out there. Um, if, if you do see me, come say hi. I know she lives in Austin, I believe. And people are saying, hey, Drew's World, what's up, man? Thanks for the content, Chris. Hey, what's up, Drew? He's in the green room as well. Hey, man, Drew, he messaged me, to, messaged me today. Let's meet up tomorrow. Um, I'm going to be working on some editing, but I would like to talk to you about something. Um, and Melissa Francis says, Ryan Roots. I love Ryan Roots. Yeah, right, the Roots channel is amazing. Okay. Angela J, how do I join the green room? It's the second link down below. Go check that out. Um, okay. I think that's pretty much all the questions. Guys, if you're in the green room and you want to hear more about this thing, tomorrow is going to be a live video uh, before noon. Probably, probably, if everything goes right, 11 o'clock because I got to do some VA training in the morning. But that's pretty much it. You know, sharing is caring, guys. Have fun out there. Uh, definitely go call your REIs and see if they have a sale to, uh, this weekend. But if they don't, figure out when the sale is. And uh, I think you're really going to enjoy it. You got to just show up. It's fun. Um, yeah, but expect to see a lot of people online. Expect to be like, what the hell? Like, it's not uncommon when there's hundreds of people online. Like, these cars kind of come by. They're like, what the hell is going on in this place? And like, everyone's like, what the hell is going on? Like, you see all these random people going through the parking lots. Like, what the hell is going on? They always say the same thing. Do you know what's going on in there? Like, and everyone's just like, yeah, it's the REI garage sale. So it is a big deal. Uh, if you're in the outdoors community, like, you definitely know about it, like, for sure. Um, but yeah, it's freaking great. So have fun with it. Go after the line goes in, go at whatever, 12 or noon or three and see what's left over. Maybe you want to wait in line, whatever, and go check that out too. But there's definitely a strategy behind it. I'll talk it to talk about it in tomorrow's, in tomorrow's video in the green room. I'll see you guys later. Take it easy. Bye-bye.